Without further ado, we'll launch straight into our next talk, which is hosted by Fer Kajiano, who is going to discuss creating history and preserving art as NFTs. Fer? So first of all, let me give, me, uh, give a quick introduction who am I. I am a Brazilian artist. I live in the United States. I've been a full-time artist for over 20 years and also a collector for just as long. So I've owned galleries and I have been in this industry long enough that I just wanted to know that I have some sort of like background to give you the information that I would like to share. Oops. So first thing I wanted you to think about is the difference from uh, Web 1, Web 2 and Web 3. So when you think about Web 1, when we first had internet and the websites were all static, Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, I was like trying to reach the microphone, but. <laughs> so web two is when websites started becoming interactive and that's when you had social media and all of that and e-commerce as well. Web three is the biggest difference in my mind is that we own our own content. So for that reason, I see a huge opportunity for creating history in the blockchain. So the material that we're going to put online is not going to be lost anymore when a platform goes down and we all have been there, you know, like stuff doesn't stay. So when you think about art, you would put your website and have your catalog online for people also like to purchase, but also to see what you have as a portfolio. And with Web3, you can actually use that to put your story online and that's going to be there for generations to come, we hope that the technology will be still available. So, for me, what really means is that art is not going to be lost or damaged anymore. If you look at history, we have several examples of art that has been lost or, you know, attacked by, uh, you know, vandalism and all of this. So, I am proposing here the concept that we're going to be minting with intention to keep the art safe. Here are a few examples of art that has been damaged through time. This is a um, portrait of Rocket My Venus by Diego Velazquez, and it got slashed by a protester. The Pietà, I'm not sure if anyone has had the opportunity to see. I cried when I saw it, it's so powerful. And that one got uh, hammered down by a geologist. Is that what it is? Yeah. We have the Mona Lisa. There has been so many attacks that I can't even list them there. So people try to steal it, uh, you know, damage has been all sorts of kind of uh, attacks on her. And I don't know if anyone has seen, like recently they've been doing the teacup, not the teacup, the cake. So people are protesting art by throwing cake on them. And it's a new movement from uh, some environmentalists. And this one, Ron Braun, the Night's Watch have been also hurt by several, several attacks. It has uh, suffered from, um, let me see, this one was slashed and they threw acid at, at one point and it has been restored several times. And I bring this piece specifically to talk to you about a project that brought this idea to my mind, which is Mataron Braun. I had the opportunity to interview them before they launched. And what they're doing, they digitalize the whole legacy of Rembrandt and they're bringing them as NFTs now. So uh, besides just showing the, you know, the NFTs in the uh, presentation that we are familiar with, you know, OpenSea and all of this, they're actually building a meta museum and they have like a book with all Rembrandt's legacy in it. So I find that an amazing example of how we can preserve art in the blockchain. So this is how we see our NFTs today. And, you know, like that's good for just, you know, like having a list of stuff that you can actually look at. But this is how I see that we're actually going to enjoy all the art that we have online. So now you can have, it's not only the art that is an NFT, the galleries are also NFT. So everything is preserved in the blockchain in that aspect. I use both on cyberspace, so I am a super fan of online galleries. And this is an example of a spatial gallery and how um, besides just walking around and browsing, you can click on an image and you can have the information. So that's the way that I think we can experience all the art that is there. 
Now, this is a business, for instance, that is doing amazing on creating virtual galleries and anything like, you know, you can have like a, a, a museum, you can have any event that you are going to bring online and explore that scenario. So this is how we're doing it now. We're having parties online and we're visiting all these galleries and events and doing uh, receptions. So all of this art is going to be able to be seen by everyone anywhere in the planet. And what I actually really like about the online galleries is that you can be very creative. It's not just, you know, you go in an event like this. This one, for instance, has a car upside down on the roof. So why not? This is another example, like a haunted castle. And here's a concept of how, you know, like a, a vision that you have can be brought to reality online. So but my point is, whether you are a small artist or a big historical figure, you have the opportunity to put all the information in the blockchain. So for me, uh, personally, I'm actually like, they were talking about books and I think that's fascinating. So I'm writing my story and putting them as stories and art on the blockchain. And I think that when you think about what that truly means is that don't look at the blockchain only as a marketplace. Look at this as a way to preserve your story. So my main point is to mint with intention. So everything that you have there is going to stay there. So um, I really rushed through. I still have three minutes. If anyone has a question, I would be happy to answer. <laughs> or not. Oh, you do have a question. So to build one of these uh, meta universes, what tools do you use? Um, what tools do I use to build an uh, online gallery? Well, you can actually go online for on cyberspace. You have several free galleries that you can just set it up. Or you can commission like a company like the one I mentioned before, Art Unchained, and they will custom build for you. And what it does basically, it constructs a gallery on a 3D model base, and then it gets uploaded to, uh, there's all sorts of metaverse right now, and you can use all of those. So, uh, well, he had a question first. When you uh, basically make something on the blockchain, there is a couple of ways to do that. So yes, some, uh, some images are not stored on the blockchain and that's a big problem. You can store them on the blockchain. There's different ways of doing that. So if you're really concerned about doing this right, you should use the tools that actually put them on the blockchain. And you had another question. Yes, I was just curious. Um, so this makes a lot of sense for 2D art, uh, but for things like books, do you know of any of these developers that are creating a place where you can actually find the book um, and actually interact with it and not just see a cover of the picture or the individual page? Well, the book industry is still getting to uh, be developed right now. We have some people here in the audience that I have spoken before, and they're actually right in that industry. I personally am doing my book as each chapter is one NFT that comes with an art and a story on the description. But I'm sure people will develop in many different directions on how to, pre to present books online. And anyone else? Well, I guess that's it. Well, you do have a... <laughs> Well, right now, I would say the best galleries are the smaller ones, just because um, we don't have the power yet everywhere for computer processing. And I do personally have galleries that host over like 200 NFTs, and they get very hard for loading. So the best way to do it, in my opinion, is having a small gallery with portals that direct to different rooms, so you create kind of like a conversation as a full space to navigate. I think it's Artwave. I'm not sure, but it, it has to be on your contract. Okay. Oh. I <laughs> yes, that's the one. Thank you. Well, and I am out of time, but I'm happy to talk to anyone outside the stage. Thank you. <laughs>